always wear whatever uh, PPE is adequate. Um, use eye protection. With a bungee, if something lets go, it's a really strong bungee, but if something lets go, you don't want it hitting you in the eye. So wear PPE. So I'm finally getting around to doing a video on how to set up and use with some examples the Sokka and I'll explain a little bit of difference between the version of the Sokka that I have now and also the Sokka Mini that I've put back out on the market. I'm going to try to do this um, as we talk about the different components and stuff. The Sokka can be used just straight out of the bag without any adjustments or it can be adjusted to whatever the climber has and that's what's great about it is it's simple but it doesn't have limitations this is the Sokka I've tried to make the most versatile functional and efficient knee ascender on the market it's very adjustable and I get asked why the adjustability is important There are several limitations when you're using a knee ascender, and I don't have my harness on because everybody has a different harness, different multi-sender, different attachment points. But a couple things to consider. One is the length of the stride that an individual wants. That is dictated by the distance between that knee ascender and this foot ascender. So that's my stride right now. I can't have the foot ascender go past my knee ascender. The other limitation is that when my knee ascender comes up, it's going to impact whatever multi-sender I have up here. The other thing that needs to be adjusted is this bungee attachment and having enough lift on the bungee so that it recoils or the entire knee ascender. So this can be placed in many different places. So this is the ascender right out of the bag. This is the Sokka right out of the bag. Now most of you are going to be able to put that on your foot and then attach it to a chest harness someplace or whatever uh, attachment point you have. You're going to get an adequate step there and you're going to get an adequate stride. Now there's a lot of adjustability. People are different sizes. They take different strides. They might want to take a different stride that day. They might be in a competition and they're racing, so they want to take huge strides. So we have, I've set some up here to demonstrate the different adjustments. So that's straight out of the bag. Almost always works for everybody. This is where I've let out a lot more of that bungee. In this case, it might be a case where somebody wants to, maybe they don't have a chest harness. Maybe they're not going to use a chest harness. Maybe they're really tall. Now they can take that bungee and they can put it all the way up here and go up and down with their hands. So that's with the bungee let completely out and you get all kinds of stretch. Now I'll point out when it comes out of the bag, you get all kinds of stretch, stretch too. So, you know, that's, that's just the additional bungee I'll try to cover all the bases this is adjusted now so that it comes right off the top of the ascender this might be a case where either you're like a I'll point out not using a tending device or your multi sender is very low so this is going to come up say my multi sender is right here when I take my stride, it's going to come up and it's going to hit against my multi-sender. 
So you can adjust that to be very low. You still get a heck of a lot of stretch right off the top. This is one that's set up for a huge stride. All I've done is lengthened out the tether. And now I'm going to be able to go all the way with a huge step like that. And that's, that's, like taking, that's like climbing a flight of stairs and maybe going three steps at a time. Again, because that's raised up so high, your multi sender is going to have to be up here someplace. That's one setup. This is a setup. If a person is very short or a child is learning how to uh, stride up a rope, they might have really short legs. So we've set this one up. All I've done is cut off part of the bungee guide and set this up for a very short person. So if a short person, you know, they're down here someplace, now they'll have all the stride that they want to. And again, the bungee can be adjusted to wherever that child or that person is going to attach that to. The other question is, why would I want to adjust the length of this stride? And more importantly, why would I ever want to even adjust the length of this bungee guide? Well, again, when you lift your leg, this is going to come up and it's going to impact whatever multi sender you have here. And I can't even address that because there's so many configurations of a Pernison's harness. Um, but for shorter people, um, this would be like right up in here someplace. And, and so for a shorter person, this is going to come up and impact their multi sender. So not only is it about the length of their stride, but the top of this is going to impact their multi sender. Uh, a couple other questions. Why do I even adjust the bungee? Well, for one, if you have the bungee, and uh, again, there's so much stretch, there's a lot of flexibility here, but if the bungee comes up, and when you raise your leg, when you raise your leg, and it, again, it depends on where you have all this attached, but if the bungee comes up, that's as far as that's gonna go right there. It's not gonna go any higher because I have less bungee. Now, of course, attach this higher someplace. That depends on what your capability is as far as where you're going to attach that. If it's attached high up here someplace, and I come down, and you can see right there where it starts to bottom out, well, that's going to really pull on my... If I had it up here on the chest harness, that becomes very uncomfortable. You're looking for a balance in the strength of that bungee. Let me point out as well, it only takes five or six ounces to lift this uh, ascender. You'll notice that the bungee hasn't even started to stretch yet. But if you're racing or you're taking a really fast step, you want that to be a little more responsive. And in that case, you want to have the bungee stretched a little bit before it ever gets started if that makes sense. So those are a couple reasons um, why you'd want to adjust the bungee. It's, it either bottoms out and it pulls on your harness really hard, or you're not getting the response, the, the, a fast enough response. <clears throat> There's two ways that the length can be adjusted. One is just by shortening that buckle and then when that buckle gets shortened, it's okay if the bungee extends down below the bottom of this buckle. So that would be a totally acceptable configuration, just, 
just like this. Now you may find that that's more susceptible because it's pulling it away. You might want to put some kind of a, a zip tie or something on here that doesn't actually connect the tether to the bungee guide, but yet it keeps it, keeps it in place. That would be completely acceptable. The uh, bungee will still recoil. Everything works just fine. Um, and then you still have the option of lengthening that out if you'd like. The other option is to completely take this bungee guide and all I've done is I cut the bottom off of it. So I shortened it by cutting it and then you take a lighter and melt those fibers right there. And now you have a shortened version just like the ones we used to have to custom make. And you'll shorten this buckle and you're, you're good to go with now a short socket. Starting with the foot loop, this is the foot loop. It has an elastic strap in here. We've put a uh, bungee across the top so that the loop can be snugged up. And there's a couple simple ways to use it. First of all, if somebody wants to leave it connected to the socket and just take this on and off, they can do that. And all they have to do is put their foot through the foot loop. And basically, they can even take off this bungee if they don't want that. If they don't want this in here, just go with the nylon strap around the boot. It works pretty well. I found them the foot loop to be more comfortable than boots that even have the connection because this goes around the outside and the hard sole of the shoe so you don't feel the pressure uh, from the strap inside the boot at any rate so one way to do it is just step in that way the other way to do it is to put the elastic up over the top of the boot and then climb on it that way. I'm not going to pull it all the way up. That's a, that's a little more trouble and I would, when I start doing it this way, is when I'd probably start leaving it on the boot. And that's how I do it when it comes to leaving it on the boot. I take that elastic strap and I put a couple laces over the top of the elastic strap. That way I know this foot loop is never going to come loose. Then, this is customizable. Is that a word? This can be customized. And um, what I do then is, once I get this in position, then I just take this bungee and I put a, an overhand knot and pull that. And now you have a nice snug little loop. It doesn't catch on debris. Um, if you're happy with the length that you have there and you know you're not going to be swapping it out onto other boots, trim that off if you want. Just cut it off and then take a little lighter and, and melt the ends a little bit. Anyway, that's how I run it on my boot. That's the foot loop. Uh, let me talk about the socket ascender for just a moment. I've mentioned this a couple times. I've worked really hard getting the teeth exactly where I like them. They need to be aggressive enough that they will engage on a tension rope because you're standing on the other side. The other thing that makes this very functional is now when that ascender opens, it hits the latch and that's what keeps the rope from coming out. If you pull really hard, you can force the rope out anyway. This is not life support. When, I, when it gets to this point, when I open the latch, it never closes back down. In other words, it only goes one direction. So, as long as this is completely unweighted, it can move up the rope slightly. When you open that latch, it will never pick the rope. Versions now have a little hole on there, and you can actually take, if you want, put a bit of throw line or a string or whatever you want through there and now it makes it much easier to open that if somebody doesn't want to bend down as far as thinks it's difficult to open. So that's that's the ascender. This is 
this is the Saka Mini and it has the adjustable tether it has the same foot loop it has the 4 kilo newton rated carabiner if you keep that with a fairly small loop and keep it oriented the carabiner is very strong and you won't have problems with it the uh, bungee on the Saka Mini is very stretchable you can Put this in numerous configurations but the difference is between this and the regular Saka is that you can't pull this from the very top there's no bungee to pull from the top you have to have a chest attachment you have to put it on your wrist you have to put it someplace higher than you would with a normal Saka this was this was one of my inventions and it ends up being a little bit bulky and also because it has a pulley inside it is not as responsive it loses some of <laughs> it loses some of its efficiency because it's going through a pulley um, but you can see that was attached to the ascender. The idea is that now you can pull directly from the top and from this I was able to get quite a bit of stretch right off the top of the ascender. Let me talk about one other component of the socket. This is the tether. It's adjustable. You can adjust that buckle. You can adjust the stride to anything you want. It's got hard side velcro, velcro all the way down except when you get close to where the buckle is. You can adjust this much smaller. It does get a little more difficult to get that through the buckle, but you can adjust it smaller if one were to want to do that. And there's a lot of reasons that you want to adjust the length of that stride, and I won't get into that right now. But that is uh, very adjustable. This is, this is what I would call the bungee guide. It connects to the tether and the ascender and then the velcro all holds that into place. The bungee guide has additional uh, bungee. You'll get all kinds of stretch from the bungee guide and uh, you may not need all of the bungee. There's a bunch of extra that's in this sock you may not need all that extra bungee so you can cut it off or you can tuck it in the sock for later use some may find that this is just fine in fact most people would probably find this to be adequate depending on what kind of a climbing system you're on and um, uh, how you're using it but let me point out one quick way to make an adjustment this comes with, um, like I said, additional bungee stored up underneath this sock. So you can see I've got that extra bungee up there, and then it goes, it goes way out there. So if somebody wanted this to be a little shorter, then the easiest way to do it is to take this first side here and pull that down. Now you can see there's not much on the top, but you still get plenty of step out of that. And then I just put a half hitch on there and tuck everything underneath the sock and you're good to go. So this is, this is the Sokka all put together, ready to go. And um, I'm going to demonstrate a couple ways to do that. Let me demonstrate a little bit of what I would call stepping up the rope. Stepping up the rope is not a natural thing. We've been walking our whole life. We use our feet for balance. When we take a step forward, we're always moving our feet forward. And all of that stuff has to be completely forgotten when you start stepping up a rope. That's why a lot of people will grab this and think it's going to be easy because they've been climbing for a long time and they've been walking forever. And so I'm just going to run up that rope like all these other guys I've seen scream up the rope. And then the first time they do it, their legs are flailing all over the place and 
they're using their legs for balance so it'll shoot out this way or whatever. You just got to be able to shut that off and it's hard, very hard to do. So I'll set up a SRT and doubled moving rope and a couple different ways of doing it. Okay, so when you climb SRT has a remote anchor up there. It's a single line. It's not moving. Uh, when you climb on that, most people will have some way of tending this device. In other words, while you're stepping up the rope, that device needs to follow along with you. And I'll demonstrate that. But before I do, I'm going to demonstrate doing that without any kind of a tending device. And this would be difficult to do without some other tending method or without some other method of pulling your knee ascender up the rope. So, um, and while I'm talking about this, I'm going to shorten my bridge to practically nothing. And let me just say that the first thing you do when you get on any knee ascender is you want to first of all put on your foot ascender a foot ascender is going to be required if you're going to use both feet to step up a rope. And you want to step up on this and sit down. The reason you want to sit down is it gives you an opportunity to check your entire system and your harness. If you don't do that, it's possible to put on your foot ascender, put your knee ascender on, and not have your harness buckled or connected in any way and just then just stride right up the rope and you'll get up there and sit down and realize you're not sitting in a harness. So always put on your foot ascender, put on your knee ascender, check your system, and then get ready to walk up the rope. Excuse me, get ready to stride up the rope. So this is without, normally I would have a tending device, and this is without any tending. You'll notice my stride is limited by my ascender coming up and hitting on my ascent device, or my knee ascender hitting up here. So that works, but it's not really efficient, but it works without the tendon. Well, I'm talking about a couple things. Um, storage, when I go up a rope, uh, the first thing I'll do is I'll just take it off and put it on a side connection. Maybe on my D's, but maybe someplace else. If it looks like I'm pretty much done with it, then what I do, and I think it was Sean Welch that showed me this one. I just take it and I'll put it underneath my leg right there and I can honestly almost forget that it's there. Other people, We'll take it. You can let it just hang if you want. Just let it hang from your harness. Other people will take it from their side D's. And they'll just connect it to the back. You know, sit back there and forget it. Uh, there's all kinds of places you can store it and almost forget them to have it. Okay, so on a traditional SRT climb, I'll have my ascent device and then I'm going to tend my ascent device with either a chest harness or something that's up here that can make my ascent device follow me as I go up the road. So in this case I'm going to uh, connect here and we'll set that up. So uh, first thing I do is again I'll put on my foot ascender. See how that looks. 
and I'll put on my tending device. See if that's in about the right position. And then I'll take a step, sit down, check my harness. Put on my knee ascender, my socket. And now I'm ready to walk up the road. Excuse me. Now I'm ready to stride up the road. It's important to try to keep your feet and a good place to practice is up against the tree like this. Because if you're walking up the rope and your feet aren't getting very far away from the tree, then you're doing it right. So that's, that's SRT. Now everybody's going to have a different harness, different configurations. You can have a rock climbing harness, I don't know. People have rope bridges, they have other connections. And again, with the Sokka, it is so versatile that you can configure it for whatever you're climbing on. That being said, let me show the difference between SRT and we'll set up a climb for DRT or doubled moving rope. So for doubled moving rope, I don't have to tend anymore. This is going to self tend because that's just how a doubled moving rope works. So no longer do I need to even have a chest harness. Now I'll take mine since it's not in use and use it as kind of suspenders, but so now we don't even need to have a chest harness. So again, the difference between um, SRT and doubled moving rope, uh, where I have both anchors in my position, is that I don't have to use a tending device. Again, this could be at any, any length on a person's harness. It can be lower, depending on their bridge. It can be higher, and you can make whatever adjustment you need to make with the Sokka in order to meet those needs. So I'll put on my foot ascender. Sit in my harness. Make sure everything is comfortable and well connected. Put on my knee ascender. Stand up and walk up the rope. Again with a double moving rope. I don't have to take an awful lot twice as many steps. It's easier, but it takes a lot longer. I'll also mention here too, it doesn't matter if I have my foot ascender on my right foot, my knee ascender on my left foot. When your feet are going straight up and down the rope and your feet are perpendicular to the rope, this ascender is going to follow your foot. It doesn't matter if it's on my right knee or on my left knee. This is one last little tip that I can think of. I can figure it. I can figure this so that the ascender is facing away from my leg. It makes sense your rope is going to be here. And because I do that, I face the carabiner so that when I reach down to put it on my boot, it is going into the boot that way. It just makes it a lot easier, a lot easier to take on and off of that foot loop. Thanks for watching. See you later, Sokka. So here's the setup. I've just got my SRT anchor 
set there. Just tied an alpine butterfly and put a hitch climber pulley there for a doubled moving rope, all using the same 100 foot climbing line. I'm not that high, maybe 25 feet.